Hi everybody. Uh, so there was a time there I wasn't making some tutorials. Uh, I did do a tutorial on the jagged stitch, but it doesn't have any like uh, rows in between like it does in my jagged stitch afghan. And then I made a uh, let me. It's called serapi. Serapi. Uh, serapi poncho for my husband and I also did it in the same uh, kind of way I, I mean the exact way that I did the uh, jagged stitch crochet afghan scrap yarn afghan so I decided I would do a tutorial to show you how I did that because some people are getting uh, confused and they're not adding the extra row so this is going to be the tutorial for the afghan slash the serape did I say that right? serape? serapi serapi so anyway, um, most of the information about the yarn, because I'm going to be dealing with two patterns, obviously. Uh, you can find all the information on the pattern itself. This is more for a tutorial to take you, the stitch tutorial to take you through how I did it. Uh, for the scrap yarn afghan, for the twin size that I made, I chained um, 171 because I was dealing with chains. And then that plus one will actually uh, change into 170, so you have an even number of stitches. Uh, I used the double crochet foundation stitch for um, the serape, serape. Uh, so I did an even number 180. So if you want to make the poncho then you can, it was a large size for my husband. So I made it 180 because I'm going the lengthwise of him and then folding it like this and then his head will go here. So I'm trying to like you know get it as long as I can for him to be able to you know it'll cover most of his back in his chest area but for the twin size the the jagged stitch crochet scrap afghan it was made like this so it's the width so keep this in mind depending on what you're you're making okay so let me go ahead and get started and I will show you how to do the actual stitch itself it's so much easier for me to do the the double crochet foundation stitch just because it's uh, it just makes the beginning row of your project not be so tight but if you prefer to do the chain just keep in mind that the multiples of this stitch is two plus one so however you wish to do it in chains or double crochet foundation stitch uh, is your prerogative so how to do it is you want to start by chaining three and once you have your three chains you want to go into this very first chain but first you want to yarn over with a double crochet so you want to yarn over go into that first chain you made and you want to pull up a loop now you with all these foundation stitches you're always going to have to make the chain first so you'll yarn over and only pull through one loop and this creates the chain and also this is the the stitch that you'll be using to make your next double crochet foundation stitch so now you have your three loops on your hook so you just double crochet that as normal again now this chain space that we had that we created first you're going to want to use it so you'll yarn over go into that chain stitch at the bottom then you yarn over and only pull through one to create the chain and then you just double crochet as normal again you always want to yarn over and then now you'll go into the next chain space pull up a loop then yarn over pull through one loop then yarn over pull through two pull through two if you have difficulty you can hold it like I am here so that way you know that this stitch at the bottom of this double crochet because if you turn it this way you can see it's a double crochet and you just know that this bottom is the chain and you can double crochet put your loop through that pull through I'll get a little yarn here pull through that loop and then you will do a chain and then you will do a double crochet and if you hold your finger there then now you know that this is the stitch Okay, once you have your even number of double crochets, whether you did your double crochet foundation stitch or you did your chain of multiples of two plus one, then you should have an even number in the end. You should have an even number of double crochets. 
and I have a chain two on the end. So I have 19 double crochets and my chain two at the end for a total of 20 stitches. So now you're ready for row two and you're gonna be using the same color, except if you did the poncho, then I think I changed colors on this row. No, actually I didn't because the first row of double crochets is a prep row. So you always wanna do the same colors. So for both, you're, you're gonna continue on with the same color and you'll chain two. And you'll never use this very first stitch of your row. It's a border row. So the chain two you just made and this double crochet at the bottom is considered a border row. You'll never use those stitches to create your jagged stitch. You'll only use the second and third stitch of your row to create it. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pick up that second post of the row, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through only two of the stitches. Now move over to the second stitch because a jagged stitch takes two stitches to create. And you're not going to be using the post of your next stitch. You're going to go right into the top stitch just like you would normally. So without yarning over you just want to stick your hook into the stitch, pull a blue, and then now you're you're ready to do a double crochet as normal. So just yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two. And make sure that you chain one. It's very important to chain one at the end. So and it's also important to make sure you don't use this next stitch because it may look like it's open because you didn't put a post, you didn't work on the post, but remember you used both these stitches. So you'll move over to the next set of two. You'll yarn over, pull up a loop, then pull through two, and then before yarning over again, you'll go into the next stitch, pick up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you again. So again, you want to yarn over, and you're going to be using these next two stitches. So you'll yarn over, pick up the post of the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then you'll yarn over, pull through two, and then you'll move over to your next stitch, and without yarning over, you just go into that stitch as normal and pull up a loop. And you'll yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. Then we'll move over to our next two stitches, yarn over, pick up that post, then you'll be pulling through only two, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, then you'll do a double crochet as normal and chain one. Do not forget that chain one, or you'll be short on stitches. So I'm on my last one at the end and I have my chain two and then my last two double crochets. This is how you should always end with three because remember you always need that border stitch. So I'm going to be finishing my last jagged stitch of the row, chain one and then in your last stitch you will always do just a regular old double crochet to end your your row. And then this is where you would want to switch colors because like I said you do two rows. You do like a prep row of double crochets and then you do the jagged stitch on top of that. So I want to change colors. Okay when you're ready to switch I just get my color and I just like I fold it like that the tip of it just to kind of create my loop here on the end. I grab that loop and Keep in mind, this will be your tail, so however long you cut these, you probably want to stick to about the same length as those, especially if you're making an afghan, something like that. So I just pull that loop through, tighten up, and then I do a chain of two. And you don't have to, but usually when I change colors, I do my chain two, and then I'll just tie twice just to make sure it's not going to get loose and it keeps my stitch tight too so it's not too loose there on the end but it shouldn't be necessary so once you have your chain two you can turn and now you're going to be making double crochets this row and you have these 
chain one spaces here and then you have your double crochet looking stitches which I think is the yeah it's the double crochet that you made so that's why it looks like that so you'll be putting a stitch in your chain one spaces and then your double crochet spaces so yarn over go into the space pull up a loop and do a double crochet yarn over go into that double crochet and do a double crochet again yarn over go into that space and then yarn over and go into the stitch and you'll be repeating this this is what I call the prep row Just want to do my best at showing the stitches that I'm using on camera. Sorry if I'm being so quiet. When you're working really close up to the camera like this, it's uh, just a simple little move, you know, and you're already off camera. I'm trying to get used to filming again. I'm trying to get my, my mojo back now that I finally got my new mics. And I have a light now, so hopefully my videos won't be too dark so at the end of the row again you put a double crochet in that ending chain two space and then back up a little bit I said back up you can see on the back of the stitch it kind of creates this like textured look which is really cool in itself sometimes when my husband puts his poncho on backwards it still looks really cool and uh, that's what it looks like on the other side though which, ugh, can't seem to grab it right. It's much more textured and I think looks way better. But just saying, the back doesn't look too shabby either. So, um, when you get done at the end of the row, what you normally do is chain two and turn. And again, you don't want to use the first double crochet to make your jagged stitch. You'll chain, I mean, you'll yarn over and go into the post. And then you'll pull through one loop, uh, I mean pull up a loop <laughs> through that post, and then you'll just pull through two, and then go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Remember, don't yarn over in between that. Then you yarn over and do your double crochet, chain one. Again, yarn over, go to the next, after those two, remember, go into the next, remember, skip that other one, pull up a loop, pull through two without yarning over going to the next pull up a loop pull through two pull through two chain one I'll show you one more time so this is what you would do on both of the uh, the afghan and the poncho both they have two rows of jagged stitch and since I showed you this already I'm just gonna kind of go through it real quick because the big deal people are having is with the, the border row in between they like don't do it at all or um, they get confused because of the prep row of the jagged stitch anyway is a double crochet row so can get kind of confusing chain one and then at the very end you'll do your double crochet and that's what two rows look like and, and again that's the back so once you have your two different colors and I'm, again I'm going to go ahead and cut this and this goes for the same for the uh, jagged stitch scrap yarn afghan and also the Serapi. Serapi poncho. Okay, I'm just going to call it a poncho. Uh, with the poncho, you'll both be having two rows of jagged crochet stitch. So then you order, uh, then you have a border. And 
the border is going to be uh, either white if you're doing the jagged, uh, if you're doing the afghan, or black if you're doing the poncho. So feel free to grab either one. Okay, so once you have your chain two, now we're going to be doing our border row and we're we're going to be doing it similar to the the border row that we did the prep row i should say only to give it a little bit more of a look i would use the front loop only of the i think it's a double crochet area so in this first okay so i guess it's uh the chain space so I use the front loop only in my chain space to create my first double crochet. And then I would go in the double crochet as normal. Then I would go in the front loop only of my chain space. And then I would go into my double crochet as normal. At least that's what the pattern says. So I think if you wanted to go in through the chain space like this and then go in through your double crochet front loop only, it would pretty much look the same. So I guess this is whatever you prefer. But it just gives it kind of a, it gives it a nicer look. So front loop only on one of them and then go under both loops of the next. So front loop only of the next stitch and then go under both stitch. And this is, uh, this is a place where, yep, here. Sometimes you will find yourself forgetting to chain one and you'll have two double crochets in a row like this, but don't forget to put that stitch in between to correct to make sure you still come out with the correct number of stitches. So for instance, I'm gonna go in the front loop only here so that I can put a full stitch in between those. That way I get my stitch back since I forgot to chain one. Then I can go front loop, full stitch, just to remain consistent on the front. It's easy enough to correct when you forget to chain one and then you single, I mean, then do a double crochet in the top of the ending chain two. It's easy enough to correct it, but if you mess up and forget to chain one in between, I mean, after all your jagged stitches, and I recommend backing up. So at the end of the prep row, you can cut your, your row, cut your, your, your row, cut your, your tail, words, not my friend today. And what you want to do just to keep your piece uh, going the right way is after your prep row is over, then just cut your, your yarn and flip it over. Because remember, you're going to want to do a prep row and then jagged row. So this will be a prep row this way and then whoops, then you'll do your, okay, so you don't want to flip it over. You'll do your jagged, I mean, you'll do a row of uh, double crochets going this way. Okay, so if I was to, to leave my yarn on and turn it like this, I would do my double crochets. And then, okay, yeah, then I would be doing my jagged stitches on the back side, which wouldn't be good, so that's why. So you definitely want to cut your yarn at the end of a prep row, I mean a prep row, the in-between rows the one that is done with white on the afghan and black on the poncho, you'll do that one row and then you'll cut your yarn. And then get your next, I'm gonna use brown just because that's the only one I have. I have pink over here, but it's, I think it's a little too close to the white. And since I've already shown you how to do the jagged stitch, you don't need to see so much. Okay, so make your slip knot leave yourself a little bit of tail and then I usually attach onto my chain two here using a double crochet foundation stitch because I'm using it I mean a double crochet attachment so you want to yarn over hold on to that loop 
insert it into the stitch that you want to attach it to and then pull up a loop three loops on your hook so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and now you will be working in your double crochets as normal for this row so it's just a a simple do a double crochet in all your double crochets and this is uh this is the prep row yeah this is a prep row of your jagged crochet stitch and you should be you should have the back of the stitch showing should be on the back of your stitch and you may wonder why go through all this trouble to have this border row in between and it's because I found that if you do the jagged stitch without one it looks awesome but it doesn't say straight it's like it, it wants to to turn I don't know if I still have a picture of it but I tried to make a baby blanket with it once and no matter what I did it kept you know over doing it on one side like this and then under doing it on this side and I was using the right stitches I was using the first and the last stitch but for some reason I guess it's because the jagged stitch pulls that you just kind of need to flatten it out a little bit by having that prep row and then it comes out straight comes out good so I don't know why okay so once you have your prep row done for your jagged then again chain two turn Again, again you don't uh, use the beginning you go into the second so yarn over pick up the post pull up a loop yarn over pull through two then without yarning over go into that next stitch which, which would be the third stitch of the row pull up a loop pull through two pull through two chain one then again yarn over move over to your next the next post that is not in use And you will continue to do your jagged stitch as normal just wanted to show you what the piece looks like at the end I don't know for me it's uh, it's satisfying to at least see what it looks like even though it's not that important okay there so now you've got your three rows of jagged stitch and now again you will change colors here so you'll just exchange the loop with the next color chain two and then you'll be on the back side again and you'll be doing your prep row of your double crochets and then you'll turn back over and do your jagged stitch again and then it'll be time to do a prep row again so then you can back it up to the video back up the video and I'll take you through the prep row again then remember you need to cut your yarn at the end of the prep row and then attach again from this side and do the next row of double crochets in your new color and it should help your piece stay straight and this is how you'll do that for the jagged afghan and the um, the poncho so that's it guys I really hope that you liked this tutorial if you did please don't forget to hit that like button also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment down below if it did help you uh, also you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll be able to stay up with the newest stuff coming out for me and also any news that may be coming out also I share patterns on my Facebook business page and I'll pick the the best of the week and also put that in the newsletter so you can see what people like the most that I shared on the week it may help you find a, a your next project as well so also on Pinterest I have a group on there where other designers will also share their pattern so it's a good free pattern source and that's it so I hope that you'll check me out check out my Facebook groups subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you soon bye